All right, guys, so finally time for an example of finding vector equations of planes. Here we are given three points, and I want to find the vector and parametric equations of the plane that passes through those three points. Now, I remind you, we've already said that a vector through two points on a plane or a line will be a vector parallel to that plane or line and therefore act as a direction vector for that plane or line. So to find direction vectors for the plane, we can just look at the vectors through the two points. So do we need direction vectors for this thing? The answer is yes, because remember our vector equation for a plane looks a lot like our vector equation for a line. So it's gonna be x, y, z is equal to some point plus t times my direction vector, which I'm gonna call my direction vector one, but one direction is not enough to define a plane. We need to have that second direction that allows us to get off the line. So we have plus r times our direction vector two. So I actually need two direction vectors. Here I have three points, so I can easily find three direction vectors. So my direction vector one, I will call p1, p2 the vector through those two points. So that's negative one minus two, zero minus one, two minus four, gives me negative three, negative one, negative two. My direction vector two will be P1, P3, which is negative one minus two, zero minus one, and I just wrote P2 and P3 as the same vector. I totally did not mean to do that. Let's go change 3P up here real quick. Sorry about that, guys. So P3 should actually be 3, 2, 1. I'm super sorry about that. So let's go back. P1, P3 here will be 3 minus 2. Oops. 3 minus 2. two minus one and one minus four, which gives me one, one, negative three. Now I could also make a third direction vector and I'm gonna do this in red because it's really not necessary. And that would be P2, P3. And my P2, P3 here would be three minus negative one, two minus zero, and one minus two giving me four, two, negative one. So for my plane, I can use any two of these direction vectors. So I have three direction vectors, I only need two. I also, you'll notice, have three points up here. I can use any of the three points I want in my equation. I'm gonna go P2, why not? So my vector equation then, oops. My vector equation then will be X, Y, Z is equal to P2, which is negative one, zero, two, plus T times negative three, negative one, negative two, plus r times one, one, negative three. And this is my final answer. Now just, we could have also could have used P1 or P3 as well. Now for those two vectors right there, I also could have used D3 instead of D2 or D1. I only need two of them and it really doesn't matter which one I put in. No matter what here, I'm going to end up with an equation that maybe looks different, but that still represents the same plane. Okay, so this is my vector equation. My parametric equations, remember, will follow directly from this. This is the vector equation. 
My parametric equations just come from getting rid of the brackets. So it's negative one minus three t plus r. Y is equal to zero, so I don't need to write that. Negative t plus r. And z is equal to two minus two t minus three r. And these are my parametric equations. Now, the next thing that we want to do here is write the general equation of the same plane. And now I remind you that a general equation for a plane, general equation, will be ax plus by plus cz is equal to d, where that a, b, c right there is my normal vector that is perpendicular to the plane. So in other words, I've got a plane here. This is my plane. What I have right now are two vectors on that plane. So we'll call that d1 and maybe that's d2. Now I need some vector that's perpendicular to this plane. So I need a vector that's now sticking out of the plane. My two vectors were on the plane, now I need a vector that's sticking out. So it'll be perpendicular to anything on that plane. So in other words, I need something that kind of looks like this, this normal vector right here that's gonna be sticking out of the plane. Well, that normal vector will be perpendicular to the two vectors on the plane. So here, what I need is this ABC. What I have is two direction vectors. So to find my normal vector, I need a vector that's perpendicular to the two vectors I have. So in will be rather orthogonal to both D1 and d2. Now how do I find a vector that's orthogonal to two given vectors? That's the cross product. So the cross product. So my normal vector here will be equal to d1 cross d2 and we can set that up as our little determinant here negative three, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative one, negative two, and one, one, negative three equals, cross out the first column, negative one, negative two, one, negative three. In the negative place, cross out the second column, negative three, negative two, one, negative three. Now cross out the third column, negative three, negative one, one, one. And we will end up with the vector negative thir or positive three minus negative two. So that gives me a five. Nine plus two, that gives me a negative 11, because we have to multiply by that negative one. And then negative three plus one, that gives me negative two. Whew. So then my plane here is five x, minus 11y minus 2z is equal to d. So that 5, negative 11, negative 2, those are now my coefficients here. How do I find d? Plug in a point. Does it matter which point? No, I have three points. I can plug in any of them and I will get the same d. So plug in any of the three points to find d. Now, the one that I used in my vector equation was negative one, zero, two. So that we can easily see how to go from a vector equation to a general equation. Well, we just saw, to get the normal vector, I do the cross product of my two direction vectors. Well, I now have one point in my vector equation. So I'm just gonna use that point so we can easily show how to go from one to the other. So I'm gonna plug in P2, negative one, zero, two. So my P2 here was negative one, zero, two. So I'll have five 
times negative 1 minus 11 times 0 minus 2 times 2 is equal to D. So that's negative 5 minus 0 minus 4 is equal to D. So D is equal to negative 9. So then the general equation of this same plane is 5x minus 11y minus 2z is equal to negative 9. Okay, so the last question that we're going to ask about this thing is, is the specific point on the plane? So I want it to be clear, 5x minus 11y minus 2z equals negative 9 is the same plane as this vector equation that we have right here. This is just two different ways of writing the same plane. We were able to write the vector equation, the general equation, because we are in R3. Remember, general equations for planes only exist in R3. If this had had four components, then suddenly we're no longer able to write that general equation, like we saw with the line in R3 where we were not able to write it. Okay, so the last question here that we're going to ask is, is the point 3, 1, 0, I believe I already used a P actually, did I? No, did P1, P2, P3. Is this point on the plane? Now, with lines, we saw that there was a way to use the vector equation to easily determine if the point is on the line. That is not the case for planes. So for planes, we want to always use the general equation. So if all we have is the vector equation, then hopefully we're in R3, we're going to need to find the general equation. So if given a vector equation, start by finding the general equation. Well, we already did that. So all I have to do here is plug this point into the plane. Plug in point. So I'm going to get 5 times 3 minus 11 times 1 minus 2 times 0. And I want to know, does it equal to negative 9? Question mark. So this is 15 minus 11 minus 0 equals to negative 9. Well, that's not true. This tells me that 4 is equal to negative 9. Not true. So no, this point is not on the plane. The point is not on the plane. Let's look at one other point. What about P, we'll call this one Q, 2, 1, 4. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We'll just plug in that point. So I'll say 5 times 2 minus 11 times 1 minus 2 times 4, does that equal to negative 9? So then I get 10 minus 11 minus 8. And I do indeed get negative 9 on that side. So this is true. Yes, the point is on the plane. All right, guys. This was a lot. That's all.